Like, yeah, she was a bit sick over the weekend. No, I think she's getting better. Yeah, she slept okay last night. In and out. No, Josh is playing football. We're in the park. Okay, yeah, it's not raining at the minute. Okay, yeah, he's grand. Everything's fine now. Hopefully she'll sleep a bit better tonight. She had such a fever, but we gave her some cowfall. Just seeing what happened. Just seeing what happened. Oh it's gonna be okay. God. I'm gonna ring an ambulance now. Please help! Oh my God! Make them come quick. It's gonna be okay. Hi. What happened? Okay. What's your name? Josh. Josh, stay nice and still for me, okay? My colleague's just going to place his hands either side of your head. I want you to stay nice and still, okay? Okay, God, boy, it's these points. Okay, open up the mouth. What's your name? John. Okay. Josh, Josh okay, okay Josh. Okay. okay. I'm just going to hold your head, okay? Fast and shallow respirations, Tom, okay? okay. I'm going to expose okay. chest. Gab is just going to cut your top here so we can have a look and see, all right? Can you remember what happened? Okay. You got hit? Okay, all right. Tell me, have you any pain anywhere? In your head, okay, okay. We're just gonna have a little look now and see what's going on. Is that all right? Yeah. Well, okay, no, bruise on the left hand well. side, tell gonna okay. have a listen, all right? Okay. No catastrophic bleeding here. Okay. okay, okay, we're just getting you sorted there now, all right? Get your warm now, okay? Take a nice deep breath in. Well done. Okay. Excellent. Well done. Okay. Okay. Freckles. All right. Freckles all right. Covering okay. up. All right. Okay, we're going to get. We're going to get him on smoke too now. All right. Put a blanket on you to keep you warm. All right. Just keep you nice and warm for a minute. Okay. okay. We're going to put you on some oxygen. Okay. What we're going to do is we just have a mask here. We just we'll put in your face for some oxygen. All right, and it'll help you breathe a bit better. Hi, Jared. Hey, let's hear. I'm Jared. This is Michelle. Hello. This what is happened? Josh. He's 11 years of age. Been hit by a car. He's been knocked oh, no, about four down meters. Down okay. Hey, L O C. Okay. okay. Um, marked contusions and bruising down the left hand side. Okay. All right. I'm here crack crackles on the on the left hand side. I'm gonna get them on high flow O2. Okay. okay. All right. Very cold. Well done. Okay. okay. We try and get him out here as quick as possible. Then yeah. Okay. okay. We're gonna look after your son now. Okay. Okay. We're gonna take your blood pressure. Have a nice collar ready to go on. Okay. Whenever you want, they're gonna expose. Yeah. Yeah. What we're going to do now is we're just going to put a collar on your neck. Is that all right? Keep your head nice and still. Okay. I'm going to slide just help you okay. You're doing really well. You're doing okay. I should shoot you now. Well yeah, it's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Well done. But it's just designed. To stop You're doing your head really well. Just put that mask on your head. Okay. Yeah, I'll fix it now. His blood pressure no. is 86 it's over okay. 60. Okay, the colour's on. Okay. Is that okay? We have Josh here, he's 11, he was hit by a car at high speed, he was thrown about 4 metres, so what we need to do is we need to get the scoop, okay. the stretcher and the vacuum mattress. That's great, well done. Okay. 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 We're going to get him into the back of the ambulance and we get him down to hospital and get him checked over, okay? So there's nothing to worry about, alright? He's alright, he's talking away to us, he's to be concerned with, alright? The pressure is 86 over 60, okay? Okay, and his rest rate was 34. Okay. Okay. Just having another little look, we have an open fracture here to the left hand side, okay? Okay. okay. Now, seesaw action, Michelle, okay? Yeah. We'll go up. You feel that okay. coming under your back? Watch his hand right. now. Can, can you just move his hand there a little bit yeah, for us, please? No problem, Excellent, Josh. You're doing brilliant. Okay. Okay. That okay. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Covered. Tom, will you tell him there's a little tightness yeah. here now on his hip? Feel it there. Happy. Well done. Cover him back up. Bandage in the bottom of the bag. We we'll stabilise the fracture. We we'll get him on the combi board onto the back mat. Get him in the back of the ambulance, and then we carry on. Is that all right? Any pain anywhere else? Okay, good stuff. Okay. Josh, your mum is here as well, okay? Okay. She's not there. Okay, how are you? I'm Brian, thank you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Everyone ready? Yeah, yeah, we're ready. Prepare to roll and roll. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Prepare to roll and roll. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Prepare to roll and roll. Prepare to roll and roll. Okay. Hold on. Prepare to lift and lift. 
Here we go. Okay. Well done, Josh. Okay, Josh is off the combi board now. Okay. We've reassessed. Yeah. We've got the go-ahead off Medico for TXA. So we get the TXA going and then we'll discuss some analgesia for Josh. Okay. How's that sound all right? Okay. okay. All right, Josh, just stay nice and still. We're going to look after you, okay? Yeah, we're going to give you some Always medication and we're going to get you something for the pain. In days. Okay, in days. Okay. Yeah. We're only going to run the five mils. And we're going with 600 milligrams as per Medico. Okay. Okay, so pain relief. Okay, just that. So, can't give a toxic all to level of consciousness. Yeah. Entinox chest injury rules it out. Okay. Morphine, the blood pressure, and on that reassessment there, 86 over 60. You wouldn't be happy with that. No. Has yeah. we look at some intranasal fentanyl. Yeah. Um, we have IV access says, now, okay. So, maybe look at some IV paracetamol. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe some ketamine. Yeah, and we'll there we go. that now. We'll get the TXA okay. running first. We'll get the TXA running. We'll work out our calculations. We've worked them out with being 40 kg in weight. Okay. All right. Happy enough. TXA. Yeah. In a hundred mil bag. Yeah. We start paracetamol. Paracetamol, yeah. yeah. So okay, so it's forty kg. Yeah. So yeah. It's Fifteen per kilogram, so six hundred milligrams. And we're gonna do that IV. Yeah. And okay. medical corp were approved that as well. So yeah, we're happy yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, no. Guys, we're gonna give you something for the pain now. Is that okay? Yeah. We we run start on the paracetamol. See here we go. Yeah, okay. okay. We'll keep an eye on the blood pressure continuously. Yeah. Okay. So we let it. TXA run in for a few minutes, reevaluate, reassess. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Tom, we're ready to go here. 5 4 to control. Go ahead, Delta 5 4. Control, we have an 11 year old male involved in an RTA hit by a car traveling at approximately 80 kilometers an hour. There's a bullseye to the windscreen of the car. He has an obvious injury to the left side of the chest with crackles on auscultation. He has a compound fracture to the left radius. He has an altered level of consciousness. His pulse is 140, respirate is 34, BP is 84 over 60. His GCS is 14. He has been administered 600 milligrams of TXA and 60 milliliters on scene, and our ETA is 10 minutes over. Roger that, Delta 54. Hello, Temple Street receiving. Hi there. We have an 11 year old male hit by a car at approximately 80 kilometers per hour, bullseye to the windscreen, bruising to the left side of chest with crackles and oscillation, also bruising to LUQ. Heart rate is 140, BP 84 over 60, respirate is 24. GCS of 14, and we administered 600 milligrams of TXA on site, ETA 10 minutes. Dr. Quinn, we've had a call come in. We have an 11 year old male hit by an RTA with a car at 80 kilometres per hour. He bullseye to the windscreen, bruising to the left side of the chest with left upper quadrant bruising, open wrist fracture and open wound to the left forehead with crackles on auscultation. Mm -hmm. Pulse is 140, BP 84 over 60, resps are 24, and GCS is 14. They've given 600 milligrams of TXA, and his ETA is 10 minutes. Okay, so this is major chest trauma with hemorrhagic shock. We should put a trauma call out. Okay, I can do that now. Okay, trauma team, we have a major trauma coming in. An 11 year old boy has been hit by a car at 80 kilometers per hour. He had a brief LOC at the scene, so, but his GCS is now 14. He sustained chest trauma and has significant bruising over the left side of his chest wall and his left upper quadrant. He also has crackles and auscultation, so we need to consider that he has a hemothorax and put a chest strain in. With that left upper quadrant bruising, he may have a splenic laceration and he's in hemorrhagic shock. He also has an open wrist fracture. So given the hemorrhagic shock, we'll start our resuscitation with blood. We'll insert the chest strain and we'll do the primary survey. Um, he needs hemorrhage control to his head. He's got um, a head laceration. We need to consider um, activation of major hemorrhage protocol, just again, given that hemorrhagic um, shock. We may need to do thoracostomies if he becomes hemodynamically unstable. If he does stay hemodynamically stable, then we'll be able to do our primary survey, manage the life threats and go to a CT. If he becomes hemodynamically unstable then perhaps thoracostomies a resuscitative thoracotomy and also consider a trauma laparotomy. As our assessment doctor would you do the primary survey and feedback any relevant findings as you go along? Yeah sure I'll be the assessment doctor I'll do the primary survey and I'll feedback as I go along. As our anesthesiologist would you manage the airway at the moment his GCS is 14 but he has sustained significant chest trauma and is in hemorrhagic shock? Yes we will look after the airway this is a complex trauma um, I suspect we could see some changes in his status over the period of time and he may require intubation. As an airway nurse are you happy to assist me and you're experienced in managing a paediatric airway? Yes I am experienced okay. yes. We, we have everything ready and we will assist. Thank you. 
Um, Danielle, as our surgeon, would you insert a chest strain on the left hand side? Um, you have um, an advanced nurse practitioner with you as your procedure nurse. I think probably that you should prepare for bilateral chest strain insertion. If at any point the patient becomes hemodynamically unstable, then we'll need to do an emergency thoracostomy. So we'll set up for bilateral chest strains, priority for the left side with the risk of needing to do finger thoracostomies as well. Thank you. Would you do a point of care ultrasound? Um, we'll start with the lungs, just to see if there's bilateral lung slide um, and do a point of care echocardiography as well. Pocus ultrasound I will do and I will feed you back with the findings. Thank you. Team leader support. Um, would you call the radiologist on call and let them know we're probably going to need a CT and also the haematologist on call just in case we need to activate major hemorrhage protocol that they are aware. And when the family arrive, um, would you update them and let them know whereabouts we are in our trauma resuscitation? So I'll speak to the radiologist for a potential CT, mm -hmm. potential to activate the major hemorrhage protocol and keep the family up to date. Thank you. Circulation nurse, the patient has had a bolus of TXA, 600 milligrams, but we need to start an infusion um, as soon as we can. So would you draw up the infusion and start it? And also, can you send a trauma panel? So send off a trauma panel and I'll set up a TXA infusion now. That's great, thank you. For transfusion, we're going to need immediate resuscitation with blood. So would you drop the first 10 mils per kilo of blood and give it immediately? Draw up the second 10 mils per kilo of blood. And while you're talking to the lab, just let them know again that we may need to activate major hemorrhage protocol. I'll prepare and give the first 10 per kilo of blood. He is estimated at 40 kilos which would be 400 mils. I'll prepare the second bolus and I'll liaise with the lab with regards to the major hemorrhage protocol. Thank you. Um, as our scribe can you use the paediatric trauma doc um, as a record for contemporaneous note writing and if you see anything along the way that needs to be addressed can you feed it back to the nursing team leader? Absolutely so I'm going to use the trauma doc to scribe and I will feed back anything omitted to the nursing team leader Laura. Thank you. And as our nurse team leader, um, can you support um, and answer any queries or concerns that the nursing team may have? And if you have any relevant comments, information or findings, can you feed them back to me? Yeah, that's fine. As nursing team leader, I'll support and assist all the nursing staff and I will feed back all relevant information to you along the way. Thank you. Um, we're going to start our resuscitation with blood. So would you get the blood from the lab ready to go? Um, and also just looking, um, thinking about the lethal trauma uh, triad, we really need to make sure that the patient doesn't become hypothermic. So would you get the bear hugger ready um, to put on the patient as soon as we can? So we'll get the, the bear hugger. And organise the blood from the lab and liaise with the transfusion nurse. Great, thank you. Okay, um, team, so we have five minutes um, till the patient arrives, so let's get all our equipment ready. So, if you wouldn't mind handing out these. Now, if you want to do some units of blood, okay? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, if we just check these. And the second unit is again O negative blood, the expiry date is here. The number is or zero 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 one two zero zero five two five three one, and again, this is the expiry date here. Are we happy enough with that? I'm happy with those. Yeah. Thank you. Morning, just to update you, the patient's taken a rapid deterioration in the last 60 seconds. He's now tacky at 160. His respirate is at 28. He's setting now at 30%. We did have bilateral crackles and his BP has dropped to 52 over 36 and his GCS is now 7. Okay, so that's a rapid deterioration. He's hemodynamically unstable. We need to do an immediate thoracostomy as soon as he goes onto the bed. Okay, I'm ready. We're just going to move you across onto the bed. Get the trolley locked. As quickly as possible, tell me when the trolley's locked out. Trolley's locked. Okay, we're going to prepare to lift and we're going to lift on three. One, two, three, lift. Okay, as soon as we get the back mat down, get the blanket off and expose the chest for the thoracostomy. This is our life breath at the moment. Mm -hmm. We need to remain attentive to you as take off so we're just going to give you some oxygen to breathe.
Okay, clamp coming off. And then, okay, there's a lot of blood here. I'm just going to secure this. So a TXA infusion is hung, is that? TXA is gone on there now. Okay, great. And is the blood ready? It's Did almost ready. Okay. So trauma panel is sent. Great, that's great. Thank you. First temper kilo of blood is ready to go. Okay, yeah, if you go ahead and do that, that would be great. And Danielle, can you prepare for a chest strain on the right, please? Not getting any responses. GCS is down a little. No blood in the airway. With respiratory effort, is tachypnic at about still at about 20. I'm going to move to front of neck assessment. Trachea is central. There's no surgical emphysema that I can palpate here. Can't really comment on the neck veins with the collar at the moment. Larynx feels central. I don't see any rupture. It feels okay in the center. And I'm not seeing any carotid uh, hematomas or swellings around the neck at the moment. I'm a little concerned that we're going to need to intubate here, especially given the hemodynamic instability. So if I have a line, I'm going to the right hand. Mm -hmm. So is the first, um, that's the first bolus of blood gone in? Yeah, the first yeah, bolus is just finishing now, yeah. Okay, so our hemodynamics are improving, but let's start the second bolus of blood. Yeah, well, how are we going with the planning survey? Moving on to breathing, there's um, uh, the self-ventilating respirator is about 20. Um, there's equal chest or symmetrical chest expansion. Um, I don't see any sign of penetrating trauma. Um, and there's a significant bruising of the left thorax um, and the left upper quadrant. Uh, air entry is a bit down the, that right side. I'd be worried about another pneumothorax on that right side. Um, uh, and uh, abdomen uh, is soft and non tender. Pelvic binders in situ. Um, I'll keep going. Yeah, we'll need to get some trauma shears just to take up those trousers and make sure that there's no other long bone fractures. Um, Danielle, can you insert a chest strain onto that right, uh, the right side as soon as you can, please? Please. Okay, team, so we're putting the chest strain in and then we're going to intubate the patient. You can get ready, Laura. Can I get you to get the Have we got a temperature check? I'm just very conscious about hypothermia. And Laura, can I get the bear hook on? Okay. So tell me when the chest strain is in, and then we will commence the anaesthetic. So we're 86 over 52. Our saturations are 98%. We're still tachycardic at 140. Sats are still okay. is in. Guys, can we get an updated blood pressure, please? I want you to give his fentanyl one mic per kilo, which will be four mils okay. for him, for his weight. Thank you. His blood pressure's down a little. So I'm going to use ketamine and I'm going to use one milligram per kilo. So that'll be 40 milligrams of ketamine, please. And we're going to use rock uronium for intubation, again at one milligram per kilo. Firstly, I want to commence inline stabilization. Mm -hmm. Are you in position? I am. Can you help me to remove the collar? Maintaining stability. Collar is removed. Very steady. We're now going to get ready. Paddy, you can start with the drugs. Okay. Uh, fentanyl is in. Thank you. Ketamine, one per kilo of ketamine. Block your enemies in. I'm going to wait 30 seconds and we will have paralysis. Okay, cricoid pressure is fully on. Steady, don't remove it at any point. Thank you, that's great. Now we're going to start. Okay, perfect. Nice and steady. Keep your cricoid pressure on. That's good. Cough up next, please. Put three mils of air in. From a breathing perspective, I'm happy. There's um, equal chest sounds on oscillation bilaterally, and they're equal. Um, cap refill is uh, three seconds. Abdomen is soft and on tender. Still got that bruising on that left upper quadrant. At the moment, he's, he's hemodynamically stable. He hasn't deteriorated. He may have a grade one or a grade two splenic laceration. Um, Jennifer, have you spoken to a radiologist? They're en route. Okay, and we're just waiting on our first gas. And hematology are aware that we may be activating MHB. Nula, what would we give next? Do we want to give more blood or more saline? Uh, okay, blood. If there is, we need to consider that this patient is acute trauma coagulopathy and activate MHP. So as soon as I get the gas back, I'll update you. Yes, we're going to move on to the uh, assessment of disability. The pupils are equally in to light. Uh, they're size 4 millimetres. 
How will you be here for a little while, Neela? How long do you go? Yeah, we're just warming up the scanner. Um, so it's going to be about 10 minutes, but I think that'll actually give us a good time to continue stabilisation. So good contractility, uh, long slide bilaterally, and uh, ventricular size is normal, and no pericardial effusion. Have the blood gas results back there. So we have a pH of 7.25, a PCO2 of 5.4, PO2 is 3.9 with a base excess of minus 9.2, and a bicarb of 16.9, lactate is 6.3. Okay. There's also a coagulopathy, so a PT is raised at 18.5, APTT is normal, and fibrinogen is 1.93. Okay, so we have um, a metabolic acidosis, so we have good evidence of hypoperfusion now. We also have a coagulopathy and a fibrinolysis, so he's gone into trauma-induced coagulopathy. We need to activate major hemorrhage protocol. Okay. Can I activate the major hemorrhage protocol for the yeah, patient in recess? Thank you. Okay, so the primary survey has been completed, the life threats have been identified and managed. Um, I think it's time to move on to the secondary survey, so would you mind starting the secondary survey? And actually, would you just begin with that open fracture of the wrist, please? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Timur, there's an open fracture of the left distal forearm, uh, probably the ulna. Um, there's uh, no significant hemorrhage and uh, cap refill and the distally seems normal. Great, perfect. And um, Jennifer, would you call orthopaedics, please? Yep. Okay, you're connecting the Hamilton C. 26.4. Okay. Octopus has started. On our third bonus of 10, we'll see the little globus gone in, yes? Yes. Okay, that's great. We'll get our paedics ready. Jennifer, um, can yeah. you just check if radiology are ready? And as soon as these products have gone in and the Hamilton team is connected, then we'll start with the Okay. Okay, trauma team. So in summary, we have a polytrauma. We had tension pneumothoraces and a hemothorax, which has been relieved, and bilateral chest strains have been inserted. The patient was in hemorrhagic shock. We've given blood and MTP. Um, the patient is now intubated and the hemodynamics have improved. Um, so the next step is to get ready. We're going to go to CT. So if we all start getting ready for transport. Okay, nothing pulling? No, happy with that. Okay. Nice and steady now. So Dr. Collarin, what does the CT show? So the brain looks normal, Dr. Quinn, uh, no significant findings on it. Um, the chest strains are in a good position uh, on the CT thorax. Um, I was just finishing the abdomen there. The liver is normally attenuating, no liver laceration. There is a grade one splenic laceration with a little bit of perisplenic free fluid. Um, the adjacent kidneys are normal um, and there's minimal free fluid in the abdomen. Um, so overall then we're left with a grade one splenic injury and no other significant abdominal findings um, and the duodenum looks Looks normal. We have a pelvic binder on, so is the um, pelvis normal? Um, the pelvis is normal and there's, there's no fractures. We've looked at it on the coronal and sagittal bony windows as well, um, so there's nothing undisplaced there either. That's great, so our hemodynamics have improved. We'll be able to go straight to ICU from here. Thanks a million. Team, we've just got the results of the CT. So CT brain is normal. CT chest, so the drains are in good position and draining really well. The abdomen shows a grade one splenic lack, but no other solid organ um, injury. The pelvis is normal, so the binder can come off and there are no other um, abnormalities. So I'm happy that we're ready for transfer to PICU and surgeons are aware. Right up. Nice and steady now, Jimmy. Yep. We'll go slow and steady. Perfect.